One of the greatest challenges in attaining an optimal outcome in toric IOL implantation is in achieving an optimal intraoperative surgical alignment of the toric IOL. Let's understand through this video the correct technique of alignment of the toric IOL intraoperatively, which will help us reproducibly get perfect outcomes in the postoperative period. Let's move to watching the surgery. This patient had a preoperative cylinder of 1.34 diopters at 180 degrees. The axis of placement, which was 180 degrees, was marked preoperatively on a slit lamp. Following the nucleus management and the removal of the cortex by biomanual irrigation aspiration, and prior to the introduction of the IOL in the capsular bag, it's imperative to inject adequate viscoelastic both in the anterior chamber as well as in the capsular bag with the view of insufflating and expanding it. Let's now learn how to load the IOL. The loading of the IOL is not really very different from any other monofocal IOL, but note how these IOLs have marks at the edge of the optic 180 degrees apart, which signifies the correct point of placement of the IOLs, such as to align these dots with the marks on the cornea. We now move to loading the IOL. Loading of these toric IOLs is no different from any other foldable IOL. Once the optic edges are pressed down firmly in the cartridge, I take the trailing haptic, place it over the optic, and then clasp the cartridge shut. I then confirm the optimal position of the IOL within the cartridge. Having done so, the cartridge loaded with the IOL is now snapped in its position within the injector. Then, under direct visualization, the injector now pushes the IOL up to the anterior aspect, close to the tip of the cartridge. Having reached the anterior end, the piston is then drawn backwards to ensure that the trailing haptic or any part of the optic is not trapped between the cartridge and the plunger. We are now ready for the toric IOL implantation. I use a Sinsky hook to afford some amount of counter pressure during the IOL insertion. The tip of the cartridge is introduced within the wound, turned downwards and in a careful and a controlled manner, the IOL is slowly injected such that the leading haptic goes below the inferior axis within the capsular bag. When the entire IOL is injected, you have part of the optic in the bag, part of it in the AC and the trailing haptic in the AC as well. The leading haptic, as you can see, lies well within the capsular bag. At this point, it may be wise to put in some more viscoelastic to ease the implantation of the rest of the IOL within the capsular bag. With the help of a Sinsky hook, I now rotate the IOL to a point where the dots on the IOL ideally could be just short of the corresponding points of the cornea and gently push on the optic backwards to enable the trailing haptic to enter into the capsular bag. Now the IOL implantation within the capsular bag is quite standard like any other IOL up to now. The challenge now is to obtain a perfect alignment of the dots on the IOL to correspondingly match with the dots on the cornea. And here's how it's done. I generally use a bimanual irrigation aspiration to achieve my final alignment. The IOL is nudged posteriorly to remove some of the visco behind the IOL. The viscoelastic is also partially removed from the anterior chamber and with the help of the irrigation and the aspiration cannula, I gently rotate the IOL to be able to achieve what I would consider my perfect alignment. Now let's see how do we confirm that the alignment is optimal. So in order to ascertain the optimal placement of the IOL, we take the two Purkinje images, image 1 on the cornea and image 4 on the posterior surface of the optic. Under direct visualization, we need to superimpose both these images one on top of the other. This signifies that the eye is perfectly aligned in the visual axis. The viscoelastic is cleared from the anterior chamber. And now let's get to the understanding of the final alignment. The inferior Purkinje image visualized here is the image on the posterior surface of the optic. This is Purkinje image number 4 and it is real and inverted. The superior image is the image on the anterior surface of the cornea. This image is the first Purkinje image. Let's now see what it looks like when we superimpose these two images. As we straighten the eye, we can see how the first and the fourth image are completely superimposed. This signifies a perfect alignment of the eye in the visual axis. I'd like you to notice this fuzzy image that comes into play when you align the first and the fourth images. This is the third Purkinje image which is formed on the anterior surface of the optic and it is virtual and erect. 
Now what we need to ascertain is that when the eye is held like this, perfectly aligned in the visual axis, the points on the IOL should be perfectly in line with the marks on the cornea. Once this is achieved, you now know that the IOL is perfectly aligned in the axis it was meant to be placed in. Once more, I'd like you to see how the two Perkins images are completely superimposed on each other and the marks on the IOL are completely in alignment with the marks on the cornea. Now, whilst leaving the irrigation still in the eye, I now proceed to hydrate the wounds. Care and caution is taken even while performing this step because an excessive force while doing so could result in a rotation of the IOL. So whilst I perform the stromal hydration, I ensure that I maintain the alignment that I previously achieved. Upon completion of the stromal hydration, once more I confirm the alignment. This brings us to the end of the video tutorial on attaining a perfect surgical alignment in toric IOLs. I do hope you found this useful. Thank you.